What's going on YouTube? All right, so you clicked on this video. It was because you are interested in this lens. It is the Canon RF 16 millimeter F 2.8. So let's go ahead and dive into this right now. Starting off always with price, we are going with Canon for $299. You can get it on B&H Photo for $299. You can get it at Best Buy, surprisingly, for $279. And they didn't have a sale going on, so that was their main price. Amazon had it for $299, and I assume Adorama probably also has it for $299. Now, as far as the aperture range on this lens goes, it's from f2.8 all the way up to f22 which is great for anything from astrophotography to real estate photography and street photography. This lens weighs in with the lens caps on at 6.8 ounces or basically about 193 grams. Without the lens caps, it is 5.7 ounces or basically about 162 grams, meaning it's lightweight enough that you won't really notice it while you're doing any sort of street photography or anything else for that matter. Now for lens construction, this lens is basically based off of the Canon RF 50mm f1.8. This lens is pretty much identical in every way to the 50, as it basically is just rehoused with a wide angle f2.8 lens. It features the same metal mounting ring and a no weather sealing gasket, the same focus and control switch, and the front lens ring that allows you to adjust that to any feature that you want to assign to it, which is always nice. I have mine set to ISO, so I can easily switch from a low to a high ISO instead of having to take my eye away from the viewfinder, and then raise and lower my ISO that way. Unfortunately, there is no image stabilization. That goes the same for the RF50. If you're interested in this lens, it's basically the RF50, but with a wide angle lens stuffed into it at an f2.8. The filter thread on it is 43 millimeters. It also utilizes the same STM motors as the Canon F50 that provides a smooth and quiet continuous autofocus during video recording. And during my testing, I really couldn't get the camera to pick up any of the noise from the motors. It's surprisingly lightweight and compact for an ultra wide full frame lens which I think is pretty nice, especially if you want to do street photography. You don't really have a lot of weight on that lens. There are also seven circular blades that help deliver beautiful and soft backgrounds. So let's go ahead and jump into the image quality right now. All of these images are shot without lens correction, and any of the lens corrections in Lightroom have been turned off. Now, Canon claims that the minimum focusing distance is 5.11 inches and a maximum magnification of 0.26 times. So, in my testing for my close focusing distance, I was actually able to get around 4 and 3 quarters of an inch. So, it's a little bit closer than Canon claims, and that's just from what I could find from the sensor plane on the camera to the front of my subject. Now, at f2.8, this lens has a heavy barrel distortion. It has vignetting. The center is sharp, but the corners are soft. So just take that into consideration. If you're not shooting this with any of the camera, like the in-camera corrections for lenses turned on, you are going to notice a very heavy barrel distortion with this. So when you go into Lightroom to fix these images, you're definitely going to notice that it's going to crop and stretch out that image. So keep that in mind. Now stopping down to an f4.5, the center is still sharp, the vignette has disappeared and the corners have sharpened up. So basically at an f4.5 is where you really notice this lens start to shine. It stays that way all the way up until about f10 where you get basically edge to edge sharpness. And it stays that same until f18 where some softness due to diffraction kicks in. Now going back to the close focusing distance, like I said, in my testing, from the camera's focal plane to the subject was around four and three quarters of an inch, or basically 121 millimeters. Now, as far as chromatic aberration goes, you don't really get a whole lot of chromatic aberration or color fringing, but you will notice some on shiny surfaces as magenta, but it's not extremely harsh. You will notice it on some highly contrasting edges and surfaces, so just take that into consideration. When I shot some of these sample images, how I normally do with a lot of my other lens testing, when I shot the 
book. I couldn't really get the lens to shoot any of that green or magenta, but when I shot a shiny surface like the bumper on that car, you could see the magenta in it. So as far as the bouquet goes, the bouquet is nice and you'll get some noticeably more round bouquet rather than the cat eye type that you would see from other lenses. I also did some long exposure to check out the sun stars and they are pretty beautiful. You will get a nice 14 point star. I was also pretty surprised during my testing that this lens really didn't exhibit any sort of lens flaring off of any bright lights. That being said, it is best to always use a lens hood on wide angle lenses when needed. I couldn't get any sort of lens flaring to happen with the lens when I had it. And I mean, I've done it the same way with a bunch of other lenses where I would get the, the flaring and stuff to come off the lights. I couldn't really get that with this lens, but do keep that in mind. It is a wide angle lens. So maybe during the daytime, you'll notice those a little bit more. And for my final thoughts. For the price of this lens, it's decent as a budget option for someone who wants a wide angle lens but doesn't really want to break the bank. It comes with some decent qualities for $300, but honestly, you could probably find a decent secondhand lens that offers the same quality with possible autofocus and image stabilization. This lens is great for astrophotography as a budget real estate lens. Now, I do want to point this out. If you do choose to pick this lens for real estate photography, you'll need to keep in mind the barrel distortion as you'll need to correct those issues in post as Lightroom lens corrections will crop the 16 millimeter into something around probably an 18 to 20 millimeter. So just take that into consideration. If you do want to pick this lens up for real estate photography, you may have some issues. This was a while ago and I actually reached out to a bunch of realtors on like Instagram and Facebook and ask them to choose between two photos, which one they like best. And 99% of the realtors chose my Lawa 14 mil over my Rokinon 10 millimeter F 2.8. They chose the Lawa lens, the 14 mil 99% of the time. And they said mostly because it made the room look bigger. So take that into consideration if you want to pick this lens up for real estate photography. Now, this is also a pretty decent vlogging lens. It has autofocus and it's pretty wide, so you don't need to hold your arm all the way out with your camera attached to a mini tripod and a street photography lens. This is pretty good. I actually had fun walking around with it because it was so small and there really wasn't a lot of weight. I really wish that Canon would ditch the format of this lens switch for the control and focus. So I don't know why Canon decided to make their newer RF lenses autofocus. Like you have to go into the menu to turn the autofocus on or turn the autofocus off. And I really wish that they would just put a dedicated lens switch for autofocus on the lenses like a lot of their more expensive RF lenses. I really kind of hate it. So other than that, this is a great budget lens. If you're looking for something that will get you autofocus and a compact lens, this is for you. So my my final final thoughts is I think that this is a good lens for anybody that wants to just pick up a cheap and expensive 16 mil with autofocus. It's pretty decent for astrophotography if you're into that and you don't want to carry a lot of gear. Uh, I also think, I mean, it could come in in a, in a pinch for real estate photography um, and street photography. It's pretty decent if you don't want to carry a lot of like heavy lenses. So like generally when I do street photography, I use either a 24 to 70 or sometimes I'll get crazy and I'll go 70 to 200. But if you live in a big city with tall buildings, you'll probably want something like this 16 or like a 24 mil for street photography. Other than that, I think for 300 bucks, if you're looking for a lens that'll get you in the ballpark where you can get a wide angle lens that attaches to a newer Canon RF system that has autofocus, then I think this lens will for you. Uh, in conjunction with the 50 millimeter F 1.8, I think that these two lenses are like what Canon is gonna consider their new like Trinity or Holy Trinity lens series. So you'll probably have a 16, They'll probably make a smaller pancake 24 at some point, I'm hoping, and a 50. 
as of right now i know canon only has like one rf 24 lens and i think that one's still like seven or eight hundred dollars and i don't really think that a lot of people budget minded are looking for something that expensive but i digress anyways if you guys like this video go ahead give it a thumbs up give it a like if you didn't like this video also give it a thumbs up hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit all the buttons i'm jordan and i'll catch you guys next time peace